Welcome to the channel. I'm Chris. I'm Christy. And this is the Chris and Christy channel. Uh, we're doing a a bag review today. And this one is an older type, but it is a medic bag for the United States Army. Uh, this particular one is in Woodland. This is a very, very hard one to find, actually. Yeah. Uh, it's a backpack. It's got shoulder tiny. straps. <laughs> it look, it's tiny, but it's got a lot of stuff in it, believe me. Teeny tiny backpack. Uh, it's got four external <laughs> pockets. It's got four medic pockets. Okay. And we're going to start with the internal of the bag. Have we organized this bag before? Uh, long time ago. Wow. Oh, now I remember. Okay. I hate this bag. Now, <laughs> on the top part here is flat stuff that you can put in here. So in this bag is... Let's see here. We've got lip moisturizer, triangular bandage, two of them. Um... Rehydration salts, purification tablets, skin marker, Bactrin ointment, uh, first aid instruction sheet, field medical card, <coughs> and band-aids. A bunch of band-aids and safety pins, as you can see. Just basic first aid stuff. And here we have wound dressings. Uh, they're kind of big ones, but they're uh, four by four wound dressings. Very adhesive wound dressings, I might say. Big wound dressings. Now this this bag alone is on eBay right now for like hundred and seventy five dollars, empty. And we got some tegaderms, uh, which are a bunch of different te uh, tegaderm dressings. Can you explain what a tegaderm dressing is? Uh, it's just pretty just much. To simplify it. Pretty much, it is a clear dressing that usually goes over IV sites, but it can also be used for other stuff like burns and stuff like that. Now this does have fold out uh, pouches as well. Let's see what's in here. This is a Israeli abdominal bandage. Goes so over your abdomen if you're like bleeding from it. Yeah, like if you got shot in the gut or something like that. A roll of tape with it. That's what's in the top container. Next one is two of the H H and H H bandages, which is pretty much like a Israeli bandage, but it's a little bit more compressed. What uh, can it be used for? It's a combat dressing, so it's used for like if you got shot in the arm or if you're shot in the leg. Uh, also more tape. So you got two trauma dressings here. It's the equivalent of the Israeli trauma dressing. It's just H and H's brand. Uh, on this side, we have one, two, three, three Israeli trauma dressings, uh, normal ones that's carried in the IFAX. Next one down is tape and lots of compressed gauze. Gauze. H and H compressed gauze. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven compressed gauze. And next we're gonna be looking at the internal pockets. We have a wound seal kit. 
Let me see. What's it used for? Uh, it's used if somebody shot in the chest. Um, this is a emergency cricothyrotomy kit, which is to make a horn in someone's neck if they can't breathe. It's uh, basically like it's a trach. It's a trach. Um, if someone's like having an allergic reaction, yeah, they just can't breathe. The military medics use these to op open up the airway. Uh, also got some nasal trumpets for it. For airway use. And that's what's in that one. Totally off subject, but if you've ever seen the TV show MASH, um, what was that? What was the preacher's name? Oh, the, the priest. Yes, the priest. <coughs> Mulcahy. Mulcahy. He's actually done a tracheotomy when he was um, stuck on a truck, right? Yeah, on that, that TV show. Yeah. He performed also, a tracheotomy. There's a lot of other stuff in here, like some tur uh, tourniquets. Mainly more bandages. Now let's We're get to this. the outside of the. Okay. Um, let me stuff this back in here. But yeah, also, um, what I normally carry in these bags, but I, I don't use this as an everyday EMS bag. I have other EMS bags that you've seen I would normally carry if I, if I was using this in the field um, like with a militia group or a survivalist group I would have uh, other stuff in here such as uh, blood blood pressure cuffs stethoscopes uh, glucometer aspirin more meds stuff like that yeah now but it's these. just a basic bag right now until... Yeah, it's just for show and tell pretty much what we're doing right now. Uh, and here is some sur some surgical stuff like gloves. Let's sit back for a uh, skin marker. A disposable scalpel to be used for... Um, Snake bites. Also got disposable razor blades again for snake bites. Oh, uh, well, that is kind of a difference between like military medics and like regular medics. The military medics gets to use scalpels. Uh, we do too. Bands. Oh, you do? <coughs> I yeah. didn't know that. <coughs> In fact, we have to use them for. Childbirth, to use it to cut the um, umbilical cord. Oh, I thought you used um, scissors or something. Also got some 5 nylon uh, sutures. Along with other bandaging supplies and uh, also uh, butterfly closures. So more surgical stuff is in this pouch. It's easy to get to. <clears throat> Next is a glove, a glove bag, packed with gloves. Um, also, you always want to have cat tourniquets too. And also got a uh, adult size. It's an IV tourniquet, but it can be used as a if you got a small bleeder. You know, it's a, tour a tourniquet. So that's there. Like I said, most of the stuff in here is just for hem for hemorrhage control. Yeah. Uh, 
it, and hemorrhage control, airway management, like airway and fluid management, replacement. Kind of, it's just kind of like more of like a severe, um, like bleeding case. This back is some glucose gel and some airway stuff too, like tricky tracheotomies and stuff. Also, these are empty uh, syringes without needles. Um, use these with um, w with water to cleanse out. Um, wounds and yeah, stuff. wounds yeah. to clean them out. Use like your uh, Keep it from getting sterile infected. water and those to clean out wounds with. Um, it does have a carry handle. Show all around it, kind of. Yeah. The backpack part. And it's got a bottom part here where you could store possibly an oxygen tank if you so wanted to, but I really wouldn't. I think it's too tiny for an oxygen tank, though. Unless it's like a little baby oxygen tank. Also have one of these you could attach to it. It's a traction splint. CT6 traction splint. That you could possibly... Attached to the bottom of it here for keeping a stabilization of a fracture for a long bone injury. So, I mean, you could possibly do that with the the hooks below here. Um, like your leg or something? And you've, you've also got these two to where you can attach more stuff. These buckles. So you can attach additional stuff that you might need. Um, these are YKK zippers, so very, very, um, very good zippers, like the best. <laughs> they won't snag on you. Yeah. Sorry. And you'll notice that the buckles on this are, there's also some storage space up here to put something like a blanket maybe. Um, like you can get like a hospital blanket, roll it up. And have it on top here and use this to secure it with so you can keep a, a, a soldier or patient yeah. warm while you're waiting for evacuation Hypothermia, yeah uh, this is what most medics in, in the field carry this type of a bag uh, they still use these from what I'm told except not in this ca not in this pattern they have it in the OCP pattern, it's in the ACU pattern, and of course the original pattern, the Woodland, the more difficult to find pattern. From what I know, what the the new um, camo pattern the military uses is kind of like a um, square grid. I can't explain it, but it looks about like... But yeah, this is called the Molly 2 medical this bag. This is what... Hang on, let me talk. This is what um Well the, the, Army, the National Guard still it, uses it, it that still, pattern. It still kinda it still kinda looks the same. It's just a funky pattern the, the the military uses. I think the my dad was in the US Army, so this is kind of like the kind of the pattern that he kinda used like in his time. He retired in two thousand thirteen. Um uh, I don't know. They actually had the new stuff in 2013. Yeah. They done away with this, but they still have it in National Guard units. I mean, if you've seen the uh, men at the cat at the Capitol, some of them were still sporting these uh, colored uh, Molly vests. So they still had these like back these back uh, rucksacks. So I mean, they were still sporting this stuff. So that means they haven't completely phased it out yet. Um, let's see how much. Like I said, the camo one like this one is 175. Let's see how much the ACU model is. I don't know about you guys, but do you guys like to hear people like type on a keyboard on like a computer or a laptop? I love that sound for some reason. It's really soothing. I wish that he'd like write like a little novel or something just to kind of let me hear <laughs> typing because I rarely hear typing since I've been out of school. Um, 
A little bit cheaper than the Woodland. Woodland's going for like 175. The again, ACU model is going for 135. But then so. again, Woodland is kind of popular, and it's kind of like an um, it's kind of like the older fat, old fashioned kind of color, like the old fashioned yeah. military color. So like the newer stuff might be a little bit cheaper, but the Woodland brands, like anything like Woodland. It's kind of like, it's kind of like an old-fashioned color, kind of military color. Let's see how much the new ones are going for. That's probably why it's expensive, because it's popular. Let's see That's how much guess. the new ones are going for. The ones they use now. Uh, with, looks like they've come down in, va in value, actually. Oh, the newer one? Yeah, about 150 bucks out the door. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, so, they're getting a little bit cheaper. Yeah, the, um, the, the newer new camo is a little bit more cheaper from what I'm seeing. It looks like the woodland is more expensive because it's. I think it's more rare. It's hard to find, and I the more rare it's, stuff is. It's just is, more popular or something. I think eBay kind of like goes for popularity. Like the woodland, people like the camel more because it mat because it kind of matches like hunting colors and stuff. I mean, I think they shouldn't have yeah. switched from this. I mean, this this was an excellent camo. Yeah. I mean, they could have always stuck with the three color or six color de like desert uniforms for desert use, and stuck for this for you know jungle use or you know the whole reason why they picked this color. Many people do not know why the woodland color was picked back in the eighties. Why? It was because back in the day we were think th thinking as a na a nation. That we were going to be fighting against the Russians in the Cold War. We we were going to be fighting against R Russians in like Germany, Poland, and that area. And you know there's a lot of foliage. You know there's a lot of trees and stuff like that. So they thought they were going to be fighting in Eastern Europe against the communists. And you know that's why they picked this type of a color. Originally. And don't quote me on this. The reason why they picked the desert camo and changed the camo, camo around is because of, you know, Iraq and I Afghanistan. I mean, it's still kind yeah, of I mean, woodland. When they... they have a lot of woodland and mountains, but mostly it's kind of like plain land and desert. It's like if you look at the Marines, Bears is, pr is a pretty neat uh, camouflage. I mean, it's like di digital, box digital. Um, they have their own medic bags. You know, the Marines have their own stuff. I mean, they're different. But they have their own stuff. They have their own uh, Corman bags. They don't call them medic bags. They call them Corman bags. Because they use uh, U.S. Navy Cor uh, Corman as their medics in their in, uh, their their infantry units, um, so the U.S. Na uh, Navy supplies the Marines with medics, and that's the only time you see U.S. Navy personnel in U.S. Marine Corps camo, is if they're attached to a, a fleet force Marine unit or they're attached to a. Um, like a marine re reconnaissance unit or um, a expeditionary unit or, you know, whatever the case might be. Um, but um, it is a good bag. I mean, it's comfy. Uh, it's good for SWAT teams even uh, to carry medical gear for possibly injured officers. Um, I really enjoy those bags, the Molly 2 bags, 
they actually replaced um, what's a lot cheaper now is the M17 medic bag, which is what they had during Desert Storm and um, I would say Grenada, may, maybe. Um, but they had, before that, they had what was called the M3 medic bag, which is like this little shoulder bag, which is like a little trifold medic bag, which is very, very small, slings over your shoulder. They were even using them still during de um, Desert Storm, the medics were. So, you know, they were still using the M17s and the, M the M3. And a very, very few were still using the old M5 ba uh, backpacks. Uh, the M5 goes back to the Vietnam War. Uh, that, that's what most of the medics and the, cor and the corpsmen used, was the M5 medic bags. Um, and, of course, the can uh, canvas-type M3 medic bags, which, let's see how much those things were going for on eBay. M3. Three medic bags. Uh, M three medic bag. Wow, they have went up in price since I last looked at these. Oh wow! Huh. Holy crap! Really? I think that's a little. That's cheaper than most. I'd rather spend like seventy. Or eighty bucks Jesus. for a bag than a hundred. Like sixty dollars, forty dollars. Cheapest one I see is like thirty dollars. Jeez. Let's see how much the M five medic bags are going for. I hate to see what those are going for. But the M three medic bags, cheapest one I found was under thirty. Oh yeah, by the way, my dad was not an army medic or anything. He was in infantry, so he like he was a paratrooper, 82nd yeah. Airborne, right? Yeah, so te so technically... Ooh, Vietnam-era M5 medic bag is going for $125, it seems. Yeah. yeah. Holy crap! Do they really have one with original stuff in it from the Vietnam War? Yeah, they've got an old Vietnam War $700. Holy crap. What if it's got the uh, the morphine in it? That would be funny as hell if they sold it and said it has expired morphine in it. I'd laugh. Well, disclaimer, they probably wouldn't have morphine in it because um, since it is like under the controlled substance and under like government FDA, I doubt they'd even have anything like that. So don't worry. Surgery prep, intravenous medications, unopened. It's got e myosin, silverdane cream, uh, kaolin pectin mixture. Diphenhydramine inje um, injection. I don't even know what half of that stuff is. Ammonia inhalants, Dimatab. Oh my gosh. Oh, it says. Yeah, they removed it. What? It originally had more had um, morphine inje injections in it, but it's been removed. Well, with drug pandemics going on, believe it or not, please... if that's from the the Vietnam War from the nineteen sixties, bet you a dime that that morphine was still good. Well, don't talk about which is crazy. You talk about morphine a lot, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. I ain't gonna have that in there. That would be funny if it did because that, I mean, that would make it more realistic. I mean, if you're buying it for, you know, um, what's that called? 
for historical purposes, I mean, it would make make more sense to have all the original stuff in there. Um, the M seventeen. There's also people that that drug abuse too. Yeah, that's true. You need to quit. Cause you're gonna trigger someone. I doubt. I doubt that. Twenty seven ninety nine for an M seventeen medic bag. So that's yeah, a big backpack. It's like paying like. Two hundred dollars for that bag, just just to try to find something because you suggested it. No, Probably. they removed it. Know. They've removed it, so I mean it's, it's useless. Nobody's gonna be that stup that stupid to sell morphine on eBay. Nobody's gonna be that stupid. At least I hope not. But. Like I said, uh, you can buy uh, civilian medic bags or military medic bags. I mean, we went through a whole bunch of different medical bags. Um, I do have an M3 medic bag, a little trifold one. And also, um, in, a, in a, an M17 medic bag, I got this one. I've got the Warrior 8 Little Kit. Um, they also have something called a Combat Lifesaver Kit. A CLS Kit. Uh, it's pretty much got all the stuff that's in the IFAC. With the ad ad addition of, like, maybe some splints and, you know, other stuff. But, yeah. But yeah, we are going to edit this video and um, edit, like, a trigger warning and stuff. Because we do talk about, um, like, drugs and just... Things that kids or anybody shouldn't hear about. Well, I mean, I think kids Disclaimer. know about... Disclaimer. Kids know about that stuff already in school. Since I've seen other YouTubers do it, might, might as well do a disclaimer video. We're new to this, so don't, but, don't judge us. I mean, you can tell she's a millennial. I love her, but she's a millennial. So the whole trigger and stuff like that that she's talk, talking about. <laughs> well, you know, my when I was growing up, I'm I'm 36 years old and she's 21. Don't judge the age difference, please. Well, I love her to death. Um, but my generation, around Generation X, is less like millennials in a lot of ways. I mean, more, I mean, we're more thicker skinned to say, you know, not so much worried about other people's feelings and stuff like that, you know, the whole trigger warning and, you know, um, being polit politically correct with uh, genders and Stuff like that. Back back well, in the day. Well, hold up, hold it's, up. It's different now. I I'm a I'm a millennial to some point. I mean, I don't believe in that. You know, whatever gender. I believe there's a male and female. I don't believe in abortions or transgenders and all that or gay people. But I mean, I mean, I do I do um see a lot of addicts and stuff, and I have family that are personally addicts that are, have recovered and I mean I know how it feels to watch someone you love you know do song. drugs you need to sign up for Amazon music and sorry that's on this Echo Doll. Alexa it's or some Alexa off <laughs> here's a station for Alexa off finally anyway so dr I just know a lot of people that have struggled with addiction and stuff and you know um and it's sad. What, what we've talked, what, what we've talked about, I mean, might, I don't know, make someone dumb enough to purchase a bag just to train for a drug fix or something if they're that that desperate. I don't know. If somebody I don't wants know to how, try that. I don't know how desperate people are for drugs, but um, if somebody's gonna pay seven hundred dollars for a little vial of morphine, that's probably barely gonna give them. Like a cu a couple minutes of a good feeling. If they're gonna pay seven hundred dollars for something like that, 
that's from the night the 1960s that might have diluted over time. I mean, that's and also a big this thing. channel might not be for children because we do talk about like trauma wound, wounds and stuff, and um, I don't know. It's just it's just a trigger disclaimer. I don't know. I never even knew what the heck that even meant. Tr a trigger. A trigger disclaimer. disclaimer means like um, you're warning your viewers about like blood, gore, like trigger words like drugs, overdose, uh, murder, um, like some rape survivors, like people disclaim about you know a rape story or an abortion story that might that might trigger or make someone like really really sad and you know depressed and I want to keep people from being depressed you know that's just I don't know my goal I, I don't know there's a difference between me and him <laughs> um but yeah I mean overall though you know if if you're trying to choose a, a good medic bag you know, you you can't go wrong with it. I mean, it's a good little medic bag. Um, I've got tons of medical gear, so I mean, I I just felt like doing this bag because those are people out there who are in militia groups, survivalist groups, who are you know trying to decide you know what should I carry? Should I get a big a big huge bag? You can get a walk. You can get a. a a molly bag you can get a m5 m17 m3 whatever type of medic bag you want you can get a civilian medic bag if you want to if you're in a a group i mean if that if that's what you want to lug around in a field personally i would say fit what you can into one to one of those uh molly two medic bags there's a, a lot of room in there you could fit Bag valve masks, you could fit a lot of bandages, splints, bandaging, uh, medications. I mean, it, it's endless what you could use that bag for. But, uh, we hope you guys enjoy. Um, we're going to continue with, uh, tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have, um, like I said, a former Army Reservist medic. And we're going to be doing a gun review. So, yep, stay tuned. And it's going to be the Ruger Wrangler. Um, we're expected her to come over tomorrow sometime. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be at work around that time. Um, so, it may just be him and her doing the video. Um, I'm really sorry I can't be um, on the show. Just because, you well, know. What time do you get out of work? She eight. wants to come around 8. Cause oh. I respect her life, you know. I don't want her to be here. Like, whenever I whenever I get home. And we're all just, like, tired. <laughs> I'd rather them just, you know, get the video over with. But, yeah, stay tuned for it. I mean, it's should be uh, a lot of Q&A and, you know. We can look at another firearm and get to look at a gun. So, uh, you guys have a great night. Stay safe. If you're in Texas, oh, yeah. stay warm. And definitely um, give us suggestions on what to um, to review. And we'll give you like kind of like a shout out. Um, just give us like gun review ideas. Yeah, just... I mean we can get our hands on a lot a lot of different firearms to do re reviews on and stuff like that so you know let us know and we can do our best yeah if we can if we're if we're able to to show it we will and if not um we'll show it through the computer yeah or we'll do research on it and look at reviews and you know take tell you guys if it if it would be a decent choice or not mm -hmm. um some guns we can actually get our hands on to show you. So, you know. The but reason let why, us know. The reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this is because, like, a family friend, like Michelle, she just um, said, you guys should do a review on this. And that kind of gave me the idea of, hey, why don't people just suggest what we can review? Yeah. We can review it. 
we've got lots of friends in the, the 2A community and the Second Amendment community. And we're going to be interviewing them, you know, what kind of what kind of guns they personally carry. And, you know, give shout outs. And um, we just hope to get more and more subscribers. We passed 500 subscribers. That is amazing. Over 500 subscribers in less than a month and a half. So that's which excellent. Is, which is really good, though. Um... Yeah, and it keeps climbing. And I, I mean, we're very blessed thank, and very thankful. Um, so keep subscribing. Uh, get us out there. Keep liking. Yeah, like, subscribe. Um, wa wa uh, go through, watch our videos. You know, we've got tons. Yeah. We've got like 40-something videos you can watch. So right. we got plenty of content Now for we'll you. shut up. But, and just say bye. But God bless you all and God bless America. And right. say a prayer for Texas. Yeah, definitely say a prayer for Texas. Bye. Bye. <laughs>